Welcome back to this Python tutorial series on implementing numerical methods. And in today's video, we're going to be going over adaptive composite Simpsons method for improper integrals, namely uh, single integrands with infinity bounds. Note that this uh, function only works for integrals that converges, meaning that it assumes that the integral you give it converges. It is not a method that is going to tell you whether or not a given interval, uh, integral converges or diverges. So without proof, all improper integrals that converge can be written in the equivalent form. So here uh, we're going to integrate. First, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, append, uh, excuse me, prepend 1 over x squared times the inverse of our function from 0 to 1 over a, where a is the given lower bound. And so here, here we have an example. f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. What we're going to do is we're going to prepend 1 over x squared and then take the inverse. So wherever we have an x and our f of x, we need to take the inverse. So then we take the inverse of that, we square it, and we get an equivalent form. So here I'm going to give a quick example of exactly what I mean by converging. So we have the uh, function f of x is equal to x squared. If we were to plot the uh, an example integral, from 0 0.1 to infinity, because you can't, excuse me, from 0 0.1 to infinity, we would have uh, an integral value that would diverge, meaning our area of this gigantic uh, integral would be infinity. However, if we were to change this to 1 over x squared, our function now converges. And as we can see here, this is going to converge to an actual value. And so this is what I mean by converge. And it is important to note that we can't take the integral value from 0 to infinity because at 0, our function is undefined. And at 0, our, uh, the limit on the right-hand side will approach positive infinity on the y-axis. So if we choose a value that is close to 0 but not necessarily 0, we can get a value that approximates the integral. All right, and here I'm going to give another example of our equivalent function form that we just gave. So here we have our function 1 over x squared, we can see here. And here I'm going to plot the area of the curve uh, of this function from 1 to infinity. And if we were to take the integral value from 1 to infinity of our f of x, uh, this area is equal to 1. So our equivalent form, like I said before, is prepending 1 over x squared. And notice uh, this is not related to this function at all. So no matter what this value is, we always prepend this. And then we take the inverse of our original function. And what we do here is we take this integral from 0 to 1 over a. And our a is 1. Our lower bound is 1. So we say 1 over 1. And I'm now going to show this graph. So right here is the graph of the equivalent form, the straight line. And if we were to plot the uh, given area of this, the area of this is 1. So we can see here that our equivalent integrands are, excuse me, our integrands are equivalent. Now let's change the lower bound of our original function to integrate not from 1 to infinity, but let's say 0.01 and let me change that here on our a 0.01 so here we want to get this entire area and we can see here that it is equivalent to 100 so now we have our uh, original function like I said it here and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust our uh, bounds for our approximate integral so now what we do is we have our approximate integral and the upper bound is equal to 1 divided by this value and 1 divided by this value is simply 100 and so as we see here our straight line if we were to integrate this uh, value from 0 to 100 it would be a simple rectangle of size uh, 100 on the width and size 1 on the height and our integrands are approximate so this is very cool and let's just change this uh, for this example to let's say plus 4 and we can also change this to plus 4.
and I forgot actually this is not going to be inside. This is the only inverse the opposite. And so as we see here, our proximate integrands are the same. So this is a, a cool way of actually uh, writing the equivalent, the same equivalent function in a different form. And this is how we're going to allow us to actually integrate uh, integrals to infinity by simply uh, making a representation of it and then integrating to one over a as the upper bound. All right, and now we're going to implement this in Python. And we're going to approximate our integrals using the previously defined adaptive composite Simpsons rule from a previous video. We're going to use the uh, stock function, not the calculator. So before we begin, I'm going to import, I'm going to say from Simpsons import. All right. And we're going to make our function here. We're going to name it infinity. We're going to pass in our original function, which in this example would be uh, x to the negative se second power. And then we're going to pass in our inverse function, which would be the new function here. Pass in our tolerance and then our uh, a. So we're going to have three cases. We're going to say if a equals zero, if a is less than zero, else. So let's first go back to the uh, first statement. Uh, this is going to, uh, we cannot solve one divided by x for x equals zero. So we split integral and use 0 0.0000001 as approximate for zero. And so here what I'm going to do is uh, give an example of why we were doing this. So let's say here we have our function here, original function, and we have our inverse function. We want to approximate the integral from zero to infinity of our original function. However, uh, we cannot do that because uh, if you remember correctly, uh, whenever we take our integrand of our new function, the upper bound of this new function is one divided by the lower bound. And the lower bound here is zero. So we can't actually take the integrand of, from this from zero to infinity. So what we do here is we need to break down our function into two parts, excuse me, our integral into two parts. What we're gonna do is we can agree that the function, excuse me, the, integra the integral from zero to infinity of our function is the same as the integral from zero to one plus the integral from one to infinity. So we just broke down our function into two parts and we add that up and see it is equal. And so here what we're going to do is we're actually going to, uh, we can approximate this integral because the lower bound is not zero. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Here we have our approximate integral for, from one to infinity. We have our lower bound, divide that by one, we get one, and then we use 0 0.0001 instead of zero, simply because our function is not defined at zero. So we use an approximate to zero. We can see here that these two are equal in terms of value. So now all we need to do is first compute the, uh, the integral of our original function from zero to one, and then compute our estimated integral and add that up as we can see here, and then we get our desired answer. So that is the motive behind why we split up our integral. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split it up. We're gonna say value which is our integrand value. We're going to pass in our original function and we're going to integrate it from zero to one. And we're going to add to that. Hold on, everything's freezing up. We're going to add our inverse function this time with our tolerance. Actually, let's go tolerance first tolerance is last. So we're going to integrate from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 to 1 with our tolerance. And we are also going to assume here that our function is defined at 0. So if we were to, let's say, in, uh, integrate our 
example function here from 0 to 1, it would be undefined because we can't take 1 divided by 0. So this integral would not even work from uh, an interval from 0 to 5 or 0 to 6. So first off, we need to assume that our function, assume function is defined for f of 0. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to check to see if our a value is negative. And if it is, then we need to do the same procedure here, except this time, instead of going from 0 to 1, where a was 0, we're going to go from our bottom. We're going to go from a to 1. So now, if I go back to our previous example, so let's say I wanted to go from negative 5 to infinity. What we do here is now we break it up as usual, except this time, instead of from 0 to 1, we go from negative 5. And then we add that here, negative 5 to 1, and our 1 to infinity. We get the same value. So all we need to do is leave our inverse function the same, but change the lower bound of our original function integrand. And we can see here 1.38, 1.38. So that is how you would handle a lower bound that is negative. You just do the same thing for our inverse and change the lower bound of our um, of the original function. And now else, the lower bound is positive. So all we need to do is pass in our inverse function of 0 0.001. And our upper bound is not 1. It is 1 divided by a. So that's simple. Now we're just going to return value. So there we have it, our uh, infinity uh, method for estimating integrals to infinity, and now we're going to test it out. So we're going to uh, use this example here. So we're going to say def function of x, we're going to return 1 divided by x squared plus 4. Now we need to do our inverse function. Function inverse. We're going to return 1 divided by x squared times 1 divided by 1 over x squared. Put these in parentheses plus 4. So there we have our inverse. Now let's test it out. So we're going to say print infinity of our function, our inverse function, our tolerance, let's say 1e to the negative 8. Excuse me, this needs to be function inverse and then our a, which let's say would be negative five in this example. All right, so we're actually getting an incorrect, uh, excuse me, incorrect value here for you to run this again. And the reason why is simply because in our inverse function, I accidentally wrote it wrong. I'm excluding this plus four. So I need to actually include it here. So now let's run this again. So we needed 23 iterations uh, from this. We needed 23 iterations from this adaptive composite Simpson's rule. And we get 1.38, which is as expected. And so this is a very powerful tool. And unfortunately, this is all the time we have left for today. And in the next video, we're going to be going over how to implement this in a calculator. And I'm going to also be giving more examples. So stay tuned.